uh, stretch and hold stretches for a long time. So having a practice where you kind of slow down and hold things, we get to reset the point of the muscles to a longer length where we're not in such a contracted state. So there's good things about stretching where you move quickly, you know, not quickly, but where you, you do a little bit of this of the muscle fibers. And this is very warming for muscles. And if you have this going on in muscles where there's some knots, you know, and the things aren't quite um, smooth, doing a little bit of movement can be very good to kind of just help the structure of the muscle, the fascia really to loosen so that we can get the fibers and the muscles to line up properly. Um, so moving can be very helpful. It warms tissues, it gets things loose, it gets things liquidy in the body. But then once you are warm, if you hold a static hold of a length of a muscle, you can help to reset the actual length of the muscles. So um, if you're looking to lengthen your hamstrings, we did a big you know, hamstring practice yesterday. Um, if you're looking to lengthen, whatever muscle group you're looking to lengthen, if you do a little ballistic stretching in the beginning and then have some long holds, it can be something that's very helpful for resetting the length of a muscle. The other thing that's good, and this is sort of the essence, I'm not gonna go into what yin yoga is, but part of the essence of yin yoga is to hang out in something for a while and not um, go moving around so quickly um, to put a little stress load on tendons and ligaments and muscle fibers so that not only do you have increased the length point, but you increase the capacity to hold that length point point. So the sense of resiliency that's built into a muscle that's put under a little bit of stress um, is held. So in yin yoga, we're not necessarily working with the muscles, we're working with a lot of the fascia and ligaments and tendons and holding those in length um, and putting some stress on that can be helpful. But it's also something, so the flip side of this is to be very mindful that <clears throat> I think it's really important. And this is where yin and I kind of do this a little bit as um, the sense that if you're passively holding a stretch without structural support around it, um, you can actually overstress ligaments and tendons and connective tissues and muscle fibers too. So having support when you come into a stretch that you're going to hold for a lo long period of time is very important. Um, I think it's very important because remember, what are you doing when you're stretching muscle? You're also moving a joint. So it's kind of... Um, important to remember that it's not just muscles that we're working with, but you know, the movement, the muscles move the joints. So if you're lengthening a muscle, that means you're affecting the joint that that muscle works on. So you have to be very mindful that when you're holding a posture that's lengthening muscle for a long period of time, that you're not just sinking into a joint and overdoing this, the tension pattern on the ligaments that are trying to stabilize that joint. So as we move into some long holds later in the practice, after we move some, I want you to really consider, am I stable in this? Am I supported? Do I need props? Do I need something to hold me so that I can fall, not so not that I can fall, so that I can ease into a stretch while staying in a supportive structure. So this is very different than um, like falling into a stretch. Um, so we'll explore that a little bit later in the practice. So um, let's go ahead and practice. Okay, so sit up straight and tall and take a moment and um, visualize length and space. So maybe the stretch of a long beach or the roll of a wave that is taking a super long time to get to shore or the you know expanse of a long cloud in the sky or any millions of other um, visuals that you might have in your mind of something that stretches out into space in this very beautiful way. So whatever um, visual you kind of are grabbing onto, maybe the way like a cat stretches out and lengthens or a dog. Okay, so whatever you're holding, see if you can translate that sense of length and ease in the length into your physical form. Let's start with the breath. What does it feel like to lengthen your breath? So if you imagined your breath like this, this muscle I was describing with my hand that can get tied up in knots and stuck, what does it feel like when your breath is tied up in knots and stuck? 
And can you shift gears a little bit and come into a lengthy, luxurious breath, both on the inhale and on the exhale. When you stay present for something that's stretching over a period of time or space, what happens to the mind when it's tethered to this time and space length? So when you move the mind and rest it onto the breath, what gift does the breath give the mind? In particular, focus on the exhales. So we don't wanna have a staccato, choppy, short inhale. We want a long, steady inhale. But see if you can just linger through the exhales a little bit more. The way you linger when you're looking at something beautiful. And when we linger the exhales, when we lengthen the exhales, our nervous system responds with ease. And if we are going to translate that into muscle freedom, kind of untethering all the grunties or binds, locks, knots that we have, our nervous system in its state of grace can help us with this. So let's support the nervous system with the long breaths out. Melt through your eyes. As you're ready, place your hands together at your heart. Bow in, offer an intention, what's here for you today? If your body was loose and free, what would that offer to the mind and to the activities of the day? All right, and then let's release the hands and come on to your back. There's big construction going on right outside my front door. So I apologize ahead of time if we start hearing lots of sounds. Okay, so come on to your back. Find your breath. And see what it feels like to come into that state of rest where um, we get this sense that our joints are pooling in space, free. Enjoy the sense that your body is free for just a moment before we start moving. Can you scan through all your joints, starting at your skull, move into the fissures in your skull bones, traveling into the bones in your ears, your cheeks, feeling a sense of freedom in your jaw, the base of your skull, traveling down the spine, letting your vertebrae loosen a bit. Travel all the way down your spine. See where your ribs meet the back spine. See if you can sense the looseness of some joints where your ribs meet your vertebrae. Travel that around to the front and loosen up where the ribs meet the sternum. Let that translate up to the collarbones and out to the shoulders the elbows, the wrists, all the little joints in your hands. Coming back to the spine and noticing the lower spine, see if you can space, find space in the vertebrae, all the way down to the SI joints. See if you can feel your sacrum and where your sacrum meets your pelvis. Can you feel the pubic symphysis, not fully a joint, but a connection point. Feel into the hip joints, the knee joints, the ankle joints, all the way down to the feet. Imagine yourself floating, suspended, where the joints have no, at their zero gravity effortlessness to hold yourself. 
Take a deep breath into that zero gravity, finding the big, huge inhale that's spacious, and then followed by a nice long exhale. And then as you're ready, stretch your arms overhead and feel some length coming into the side bodies. Maybe you want to wiggle your fingers or your toes. Maybe you want to stretch one hip lower than the other and then switch. Maybe you want to get into the shoulders and the armpits, the rib cage. Where do you want to feel? How are you feeling? And then bring the knees into the chest and rock a little bit from side to side. Okay, so feeling a sense of um, rocking can help the nervous system. So there's this, this sense that we're wanting to soothe the nervous system and come into that um, parasympathetic part where we're in restfulness. This is where our muscles can loosen a little bit in this state. So if we're in a fight or flight, our muscles are not going to be <clears throat> nice and relaxed. They're going to be tense. So we want the nervous system to support us. Circle the knees. And we can support the nervous system as it supports us. Our breath is our easiest tool. Just focusing on those long exhales will stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system as will rocking. All right, and then open up your knees, pull them away from each other, bring them back in. Just finding some um, softness in your hip joints. The hips are where we're gonna primarily focus today in opening our body up, but a little bit, not just in our, we're not gonna focus just on our hips, okay? All right, and then right knee into the chest, left leg long on the floor and see what it feels like to roll around your ankles. So when we have all this warming that we do in the beginning of our practice, there's purpose, but there's a purpose behind it. Although it feels nice to just to get to be friendly with your ankles and your feet and be aware of them. This is that ballistic stretching we're talking about where the ro rotations and movements switch sides can be very helpful to loosen tissue up, to warm tissue up. All the connective tissue in your body which is pretty much everything, right? Every wrapping of your cells, the wrapping of those muscle fibers, your tendons, your ligaments, um, the wrapping around your, your um, organs. There's so much connective tissue throughout your body. Bring both knees back in. And when we move rhythmically, um, like walking, for instance, um, we do a lot to loosen all the connective tissue. When it's cold and still, Connective tissue is hard. And when it's warm and um, a lot of friction with movement, it softens up our connective tissue. Lift the hips and scooch the hips over to the right, bring the knees up and drop them left. Open up into a twist and feel your rib cage. Find a little spaciousness. Take a deep breath and feel um, that your chest is starting to open too. So what can happen to let your pecs mus pec muscles open? without feeling like you're stretching your shoulder joint. Experiment with maybe cactusing your arm or bringing your arm a little further up overhead or down. Experiment with some different placements. And then when you come back to center, scoot your hips the other way. Knees come up and drop to the right. Open up the left side of your chest. Turn your head to the left if you can. And then notice, how is your um, spine feeling? Can you move the breath to help you open the spine? Feeling where the ribs touch the, ri touch the vertebrae as well as where the ribs touch the sternum. And then feel into the pecs. Maybe make a different choice with how your arm is resting on the floor. Okay, and then come back to center. Bring your knees in, bring your head up and then find your way into some starfish movements. So spreading your limbs out, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling wrists, bring your knees in, chest up, chin up, and go back and forth with your breathing. This is a great way to warm a lot of joints in the body as we come into flexion in our joints and as we come into extension in our joints. So there are so many joints in your body. See if you can open up all of them as much as you can, fingers, toes, the whole spine, the feeling of where your ribs touch in. One more time. Obviously your knees and your hips, your elbows. 
and then release your head down onto the ground, feet down onto the floor, and let's just rock our legs left and right. All right, we're gonna come rolling over onto your right side. Make right angles with hips, knees, ankles, hands straight out. You can always put a block or something underneath your head if you need some support underneath your head or a blanket. And we're going to uh, move through opening our book. So palms are together, knees are together, feet are together. Take a deep breath, open the palms, turn your head, and then exhale and come back and see if you can sense in to those um, joints where the ribs and the spine attach and where the ribs and the sternum attach. Find your breath. And then one more time. And then release. Roll over onto your left. Take your head support with you if you want. Everything's stacked up, your knees, your ankles. Take a deep breath. We're going to open up the book and then close the book. The palms come to each other and the palms come open. See if you can feel the movement of the rib cage. Feel how the breath moves with you. One more time. And then roll around to your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Now, as we come onto all fours, start to feel the, the juiciness of your spine. So the warming, there are so many joints, right? Think about how many vertebrae you have. There's all these joints. See what it feels like to um, wake and soften and loosen with movement. A lot of these spaces. Remember that you have a pelvis, a rib cage, and a head attached to the spine. So feel all the places where your spine touches other things besides just itself. And then feel free to move this pose around. So wiggling through your shoulders, your hips, spinning your head around. You know, it doesn't take much in the morning if you wake up and you're stiff and you limp a little bit, maybe your, your um, feet hurt or you're just tight in some place. Simple things like cat cows can make a big difference in just warming your body and getting you prepared for your day. So any kind of movement, that's good. All right, so stretch your right foot back, curl your toes under, feel that sense of opening through your calf. Take a deep breath here. And then we're gonna ballistically move into some hip stretching here. So we're gonna bring your knee up and cross it over and stretch back to the eagle or cow face legs and then knee up and stretch it back again. So a little bit of core to bring that knee up, cross the leg over the other leg and settle the hips back down and then up. And if you can't do this, cause you know, that's a pretty tricky move for your hips to bring your foot all the way around and over your thigh. So if that's not working for you, your job is going to just be bringing the knee into the chest and stretching the leg out. So warming up some of the muscles in your hips and breathing as you go. All right, and then when you're ready, Come back on tall fours and switch sides. Take your other foot back, curl your toe under, open up your calf a little bit. You can bounce and kind of push off your toes. And then when you're ready, either knee in and crosses over, so your thigh crosses over your thigh and settling your hips back to wherever they go. And then coming forward and stretching back. And if you can't manage to bring your thigh over your thigh, because that's a pretty tricky move, then go ahead and just come into bringing the knee in and stretching the leg out. Slightly different, but the goal here is to get some movement in our hip joint. One more time. All 
All right, curl the toes under and lift up to dog pose. So bend one knee and then bend the other knee. See if you can get your opposite heel to bring itself close to the floor. Maybe you touch the floor. Just opening up the backs of the legs one leg at a time. And now get the hips to be involved. So besides just bending the knee, now cross the knee past the midline and lift the opposite hip. And so a slight turn, opening up the hips, breathing. Remember those exhales. And then find yourself in dog pose. So what does it feel like to just be still in this posture? Do you have a sense of being able to stay long? Can you widen and broaden your ankle, your feet, your ankles, your hands, your wrists? Can you feel the yielding as you move into the earth and rebound through the spine? Melt the head. Okay. All right, let's bring our right foot forward, come to a lunge. Find the breath here, open the chest, and we're gonna come back and forth. So this is what we normally do. So go ahead and grab your blocks if you need them. We're coming into a bend and we're coming into a straighten. It's just going back and forth, warming some of the tissues in our legs, our hips, our spine. And then back foot comes forward, bend deeply. Inhale for a halfway lift. Lift the sit bones, let the spine grow tall and long. And then exhale and melt back down. Step your left foot forward, right foot back, coming into a lunge on this side. Support your hands, keep the spine growing, and then start to bend and straighten the front knee. So sometimes I move faster than my breath. Sometimes I move really slow. You know, what are you in the mood for today? All right. Now we're gonna walk your back foot forward again. Fold in half. Feel a sense of ease, halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Rise up, push off your feet. Lifting the arms to the sky, lean back a little bit, cactus open the arms, and then exhale and round in. Grab your fists, stretch your fists forward, let the shoulder blades move away from each other. Inhale, lift your arms straight up, tip your head back, and come back to some cactus arms. Shake out your hands, okay? Find your breath, and then bring your arms straight up, palms facing the walls. Lift your ear, and then lift another ear and just find some of those nerve glides through your arms. Finding the breath. And then relax, shake out your hands again. Some big circles with your shoulders and maybe your shoulders don't do this well. So maybe you have smaller circles. So wherever your body is able to move. And then we're gonna go the other way. So any kind of movement that's available, make sure the base of your skull is soft. Okay, and then shake out your hands. Take your feet wide and one more spin through some twisting, breathing deeply. Engage through your core so you're not totally loose without stability. And then let your arms be very clumpy. Okay, so just let them fall onto your torso. All right, shake our hands. And now you don't have to leave the floor, but bounce a little bit. So all this, everything we've done is to just loosen connective tissue in your body, okay? If you wanna jump, you can jump. If you wanna just shake, you can vibrate, you can make sound. And then be still and just feel the body alive. Feel the body alive. Come back to that sense of the breath. The long exhales. We're gonna move through a classic vinyasa. Okay, so take your deep breath, lift your arms up to the sky. Exhale and fold forward. Halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Step back, take your non-dominant foot, whatever foot you don't ever bring back first, take that one back. 
come into dog pose. I never do a classic vinyasa. I, I like to hang out. I hope you do too. I don't like to move on one breath typically. Feel into the length of the spine. Inhale, come forward into a plank. You can always put your knees down to support yourself. Put your knees down to come all the way to the floor. Cobra pose. Opening the chest. Exhale and melt back down. Come back up onto your knees. Find your way back to dog pose. Whatever foot you brought back first, bring that one forward first. Find your breath. And then exhale and bring your feet back together. We'll add some Surya 2 to this. So squat down, lift your arms up, chair pose. Drop the shoulders. And remember, your arms can be anywhere you want. They don't have to be straight up in the air. Deep breaths here, knees back. Inhale, stand up straight and tall. Exhale, float forward. Separate your feet. Inhale for a half point lift. Exhale, left foot back, right foot comes forward, plant the back heel down onto the ground. Rise up, Virabhadrasana one, reach the arms up, see if you can feel that little bit of back bend that lives here. How are you stabilizing this? Can you engage through your core or your feet grounding? Can you soften the back knee so you can yield the foot? Finding the open heart. Exhale, release the hands down. Back to dog pose. Yield into the ground, rebound through your spine. Inhale, come forward into a plank. And then lower yourself down to the ground. Up dog, cobra pose, any back bend. Release to the floor. Come back up onto your knees and find your way to dog pose again. Let's bring our left foot forward. Plant the back heel down. Virabhadrasana one on this side, reaching the arms up, maybe reaching the arms out, be where you are. Make sure you're not sinking into the low back, support with your core, soften the back knee, don't hyperextend, feel the yielding feet. How's that deep, steady breath, the long exhales. And then reach the hands down, walk the back foot forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, squat, chair pose again. Maybe your arms come back this time. Maybe your arms come up. Where do you want to be? And then stand up straight and tall. So just notice, are you feeling warm? Take your feet to the outside edges of your mat and come to squat. So now we're going to start to hold things instead of moving so much. Open up the knees. So I like to put my elbows on the inside of my knees and kind of press them away. Make sure your feet and your knees are on the same line. So if your knees are in and your feet are turned out or vice versa, you want to have balance. Notice if you like one hip more than the other. If you lean into one side more than the other. Widen the sit bones. Feel the four corners of your feet move into the earth. Find the breath. So of course we're stretching a lot, but we're also flexing a lot. There are joints that are in flexion. There are places in your body that are extending. So feel the spine elongate, feel the inner thighs stretch open, feel the deep compression of the hip joints. Widen the sit bones. And then go ahead and stand all the way back up. Turn to the long edge of your mat, finding your breath. I have to get my phone nearby because I can't find my watch and I don't want to keep you here for two hours. So I'll keep my clock close by. Take your legs straight apart or straight out and turn your right foot out. So a little bit of that movement here as we move ourselves into Virabhadrasana 2. So you can find some um, moving in and out of that hip joint flexion if you want. And then once you are ready, hang out here. This is a very complicated move for your hip. You're in abduction and flexion all, and rotation all at the same time. So feel into what's happening in that front hip joint. Allow the back hip to roll a little bit if it needs to and take the femur bone back. Find your breath. Anything you want to do with your arms, feel rooted. These standing poses, besides being amazing in and of themselves for building, building endurance and stamina in the body, is they sneakily open the hips up. 
you know, we're thinking we're doing all this work, but there's a lot of stretching that's happening in the hip joints as well. All right, let's stand up straight, bring your arms down, turn your feet to the other side, and same, go ahead and let there be some movement in your hip joint. With this front hip, we're abducting, we're rotating, we're flexing. There's a lot going on. So give your body an opportunity to sense into what needs to happen. And remember, if you have, I forget to mention this sometimes, if you have a knee um, that just can't support you well, that isn't so stable, this is a lot of times what takes people out of their yoga practice is not being able to do standing poses because of a knee. You can always have a block against a wall or a piece of furniture and put it right on your shin. And this will stabilize your knee joints so that you don't have to bear so much weight in a joint that may not be feeling so good. So if you feel like you get taken away from standing poses because of a hip or a knee, modify something that so you can still get the really beautiful capacity to move your body in this way. So you can support however you need to be supported. Find your breath. All right, and then go ahead and come on up. Turn your feet to the long edge. Take your hands on the tops of the thighs and stretch your spine. Soften the knees. If you were in class yesterday, we did so much about the hamstring. Do you need your knees to bend in this to be able to move the pelvis? Okay, keep going to wherever your body says go. You can have your hands down on the ground now or your hands on blocks, wherever you're going. Finding the breath, relax your head. Feel the openness in the backs of the legs. All right, then come back up. We're just gonna do one more standing pose in this direction. So go ahead and find warrior two, but feel the ribs. I want you to open up into a reverse. We do this pose so much, but what does it feel like to not completely collapse? Can you find extension on both sides of your ribs, even as one side has more? Find the breath here. Okay. All right. And then go ahead and come on up. Same thing to the second side. Remember always you can support against a piece of furniture with a block. If your body needs that, find your breath, reach on up. See if you can not collapse and shrink on the underbelly. See if you can extend through both sides. Feel the extension of your ribs. Breathe there. All right, and then go ahead and come back up. Turn your feet to the long edge one more time. This time, turn your toes out instead of straight. And we're gonna come into a super wide squat. So you can have your hands on your knees and lean forward first. Find that sense of opening through the inner thighs, but we're also working through the range of motion in our hips. Come upright to stand, and that might mean you need to come up a little higher, and that's okay, just be where you are. Palms can go anywhere you want. Find goddess pose. Spin your darlings with your feet. Pull your toes out, pull your heels forward, your toes toward the back. So that we're rotating. Feel the muscles in your hips light up to do this. Finding the breath. Okay. And then stand on up. Heel toe your feet straight again. Come down one more time. Bringing your hands down to blocks or to the floor, whatever feels good. And then turn back to the front of your mat for dog pose. Extending through your spine here. Taking some deep breaths. We're gonna lift the right leg up in the air and stack open the right hip. See what it feels like to expand through the front side of your pelvis. And then release that foot down, change sides. Other leg up, expand and open through the hip flexors a bit. Stretch that foot back. You can bend your knee if you want. And go ahead and relax. Come forward into a plank. And then when you're ready, lower yourself down to the ground. And we're going to come to lie down on our right side. 
Okay, so first just a quad stretch. We have to, you know, make sure that all the, if we're gonna move into some deep stretches in our hips, we need our hamstrings, our quads, our outer hips, our inner thighs, everything to be open. So let's just do a quad stretch here. Grab onto your top ankle, stretch that knee back, lengthen through your spine. Breathing deeply here. Just isolating the quadricep muscles, a little different than a hip flexor stretch. Can you move the tailbone toward the knee? Can you lift the pubic bone toward the belly button? Can you stretch the knee away from the shoulder? Use a strap around your ankle if you can't reach your foot. So if you're wanting to kind of hang out and stretch a muscle and let those fibers take some sweet time, and you're not sure how long to hold, you can either count your breaths, like maybe 10 breaths. Um, I, I know we've never done this as a class, but I've done this in my own practice. Um, there's, a, there's a timer I have app, an app on my phone that you can set the timer to go off as often as you want. It's like a, a ding of a, a chime. Um, it's, like, it's actually a singing bowl ding. And I have done this where I've set it to go off every minute and I've held any pose I'm doing for one minute and then switched to the next pose and done a whole practice like that. So that's an option too. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side now. So you also might notice that when you're hanging out in long holds um, that you might have preferences. Like one side feels better, so you hang out there for 10 breaths, and then you go to the other side and you don't like it as much, so you only hang out for five breaths. So if that happens in your body, if you find places that you've, you have a, you know, a difficult relationship with, those are the places to try your best to stay a little longer, to see if you can get over the hump of whatever makes you wanna pull out. Sometimes it's just a wave that needs to crest and then we can allow ourselves to relax. Stretch the tailbone, lift the pubic bone. So see if this is the stabilizing force for your pelvis as you stretch your quad. So if you let go of that stability in your pelvis, first of all, you won't stretch your quad as much. But second of all, you lose the sense of integrity that the quads are attached to the pelvis and the spine. So try that for a moment. Just let go, don't let any muscles engage and you probably won't have as deep of a stretch and you probably have lost the feeling of connection that your quadriceps unite with the rest of your body. And then do it again, tailbone stretches toward the knee, pubic bone lifts toward the navel, stretch the whole knee away from the spine and just notice the enhanced stretch as well as the integrity through the body. How's your breath? Okay, and then let's go ahead and find our way onto our back. We're gonna grab a block. We're gonna do a passive hip flexor stretch. So we're gonna put the block underneath our sacrum. Now you get to decide the height and how far you go in this posture. So you can experiment and maybe start with stretching one leg straight so your heel is on the ground. And just check in, how is that feeling on your hip flexors? And most importantly, how's it feeling on your back? If you're okay, maybe try two legs stretching. If that's still okay, maybe try arms stretching overhead and come into whatever capacity you have to open your hip flexors. You can take your legs wider. You can turn your toes in, you can turn your toes out. Experiment with some different mobility patterns. And then when you find where you want to be, can you still have that same action of a slight lift of the pubic bone toward the navel, the tailbone toward the back knees. So there's a little integrity supporting the low back, feel the core engage a little bit. So there's just a little bit of flex within the stretch. So we're opening the hip flexors, but we're having a little rebound contraction within them to stabilize through our tendons and ligaments. How does this feel in your belly? All right, so whether you were doing one leg at a time or two legs at the same time, everybody bend your knees. And let's counter that for a moment. Bring your knees toward your chest and give yourself a little 
extension in the back of the body. All right, now let's go ahead and relax. Get the block out of there. And if you can, grab your blankets. So two is awesome if you have two. If you have a bolster, you can use a bolster. We're gonna put our pelvis up on this and we're going to have blocks handy okay so put your pelvis up on the block on the blankets the spine is down we're going to take one block on either side we're going to use these in a minute so put your blocks on the either side of the long blankets and first just bring your knees back to the chest like we had before and then just like we did in the beginning if you were able to manage that we're going to cross the right thigh over the left thigh and draw the knees into the chest. So because we have a little perch under our pelvis, it will tip our pelvis a little bit and perhaps give us just a little bit more stretch through the outer right hip, okay? Now you can either hold your knees or you can walk your hands down your calves and possibly even hold your feet. So you go where you go and let's each take 10 deep. So my breaths and your breaths are different. Try not to race through your breaths. Remember those long exhales. Can you widen the sit bones? Can you lengthen the spine? Or do you hit a wave? Is there a crashing wave that you come against where you're like, yeah, I want out of that. And can you resist the urge to get out and instead stay? I'm talking, so my breath pattern obviously is very different from yours, but I'm thinking you're past halfway. If you get impatient, if stretching is like, yeah, I've had enough of this and time to move on, let this be a practice of meditation where you learn to stay. Impatience can be one thing, discomfort can be another. There's so many things that we can try to run away from. Impatience can sometimes hide discomfort from having to stay in different thoughts or different actions in the body. Let's unwind the legs if you've reached 10. Lift the leg straight up in the air and then stretch the right leg and bring the left knee into the chest. Maybe your foot makes it to the floor. Maybe you're just stretching in the air. And now we're going to cross the left leg over the right and bring the knees back toward the chest. You can hold the shins. You can hold the feet. You can hold the knees. You might notice that this side is quite different than the other side or very similar. Let's start our nice deep breaths. What does it feel like to widen the sit bones? What does it feel like to keep the spine long? One of the things that's nice about taking a timer in your practice and having it set to just chime every minute um, is that you really start to learn the discrepancies of, yes, you know, I hold standing poses on my right side way longer than my left, or um, I tend to be able to hold, you know, uh, this pose for that long, but boy, if I try to hold dog pose for a whole minute, that's difficult. Or you just start to understand and notice um, some things about your practice. So I encourage you to do that. I think the name of the, actually, I'm not going to say because I'm not sure what the name of the app is. I'd have to look. So if you're, if you're wanting to try that and you need an app, just let me know and I'll tell you what it is that I have. Okay, I think I totally wasn't keeping track. So uh, it's possible that I'm holding you less or longer. But when you get to 10, let's do the same thing, but we're going to stretch now the left leg and the right knee is going to come into the chest. Stretch the left leg long on the floor. All right, and go ahead. And we're going to use the blocks now. So put your feet onto the ground. 
Lift your hips and scooch them over to the right. Lift your knees up and drop them to the left. So we're taking a twist here. It's a little different when our pelvis is up. So go ahead and take a stack underneath the left knee or shin to support. Find your breath. And then if you want to, you can take the top leg, your right leg, and stretch it straight. And maybe you're holding on to the toe or to the calf somewhere or the outer knee. See what it feels like to decide whether you want your knees bent or the top leg straight. The knees are together regardless. Breathe into the outer hip. Move your hip away from your shoulder. Elongate the spine. Melt the shoulders. All right, and then we're gonna come up, put your feet down onto the ground, bring your knees into your chest, just let your back relax in a neutral place, and then we'll switch to the other side. So knee, the hips go over to the left, knees come up, we're gonna drop them and put them down onto a block, so whatever um, support you need, and you might need more than one block, just see where you're at. Open up across the chest, and then as you're ready, if you want to straighten the top leg, you can hold on to your big toe or somewhere around your calf, the back of the knee, wherever you go. And you don't have to straighten your leg, it's just a choice, an option. Move your left hip away from the shoulder. Feel your spine. You're sensing into that outer hip opening. All this work to prepare us for where we're going next, which is pigeon pose, um, where we're just going to stay for a pretty deep pressure. So notice, you know, we've stretched the inner thighs, the outer hips, the hamstrings, the quadriceps, the hip flexors. We're getting into a lot of different muscle groups. Go ahead and relax now in order to um, get us to a place where we're very comfortable to hold a deep hip stretch. So you can choose. So if you know that pigeon pose is difficult because of a knee or a hip or whatever, then you can find reverse pigeon pose. And if you um, know that you're going to need support. So here's where, um, when I was talking earlier about really needing support to hold you so you're not hanging in ligaments, this is a perfect pose to practice that in. So let's take our right foot forward first our left leg back. And there's a couple of different ways to support yourself with bolsters or blankets. You can put it just underneath your right sit bone or you can have it underneath your left thigh and your right sit bone. So experiment with some different practices to see what supports you best. Okay, so you want your pelvis to be square. Inner thigh, you curl the back toes under, lift your kneecap up, make sure your kneecap is facing the floor instead of turned out. Take a peek behind you and make sure your leg is, your ankle is in line with your hip instead of coming out to the side. And then notice if you're leaning into your right hip, see if you can balance across your pelvis. Your right heel can be close to your pubic bone or start to pull away. Decide what's happy for your joints. Extend the spine, plug the knees into the pelvis a little bit so we have some activity in our muscles and then start to discover those long exhales as we come down. Maybe the forehead can rest on a block or something. If we have our head resting, our nervous system responds favorably. So remember, we're hugging the knees into the pelvis. We're widening our sit bones. We're inner spiraling the back leg. We're keeping balance across the pelvis. We're stretching the spine into elongation. We're softening the shoulders. You're taking care of and notice any place in your body that is not okay, that wants to pull away from the pose. What can you do to feed the posture what it needs, feed your body what it needs so that you can stay? Are you relaxed? Or can you melt? Is there a place in your body that easily softens maybe your jaw or your eyes? 
And maybe you can let that translate into the spine, into the diaphragm, into the breath, the shoulders. And then eventually maybe you can even let that go right into the hip joints themselves. Do you have support? Are you able to melt into your support? The nervous system loves support. If we are hanging in space, whether it's letting our sit bones hang or our arms hang or our head hang, anything, we tend to not relax as well as if we are kind of supported in space really well. How is your breath? If you're in reverse pigeon, are you able to stay in the depth or do you kind of fall out and, and then recommit and fall out and recommit? Try to maintain the level of um, intensity of stretch and breathe your way through it. Let the swells that might erupt, like I want to get out now, see what you can do to allow yourself to stay. This is a big movement for your hip joint. So if you are overdoing it, your body will, um, you know, obviously if the joint hurts, if you have knee pain, then you need to stop doing what you're doing and get out. But a lot of times that SI joint will only speak to you later about what it didn't like about this pose. So make sure you're plugging the knees into the pelvis, that you're keeping stable across the sweep of the backside of the pelvis and not um, twisting the pelvis at all. Make sure you have support. All right, let's go ahead and find our way out of there and come um, into any posture that's gonna relieve the depth of that pose. Maybe it's dog pose. Maybe you just sit up and sit cross-legged for a moment. Maybe a simple twist from side to side. If you're on your back, maybe you do a couple of starfishes of reaching out and drawing in. Just find some neutral ground. And then when you're ready, let's move ourselves into the second side. As you find this posture, the, the pose might be very different on one side versus the other. You might need more support, you might need less. You might need to flip over on your back. Maybe you were on your back and you come over into pigeon pose. So even though um, we're trying to have balance in the body, we don't have balance in the body very often, right? We have histories of patterns of movement, we have traumas, we have injuries, we have things that can be um, vulnerable that we need to care for. So when you get comfortable, make sure you're supported. Make sure the back leg is pointing straight out behind you instead of um, turning out to the side. Make sure you're not leaning into the left hip, make sure you're balanced across the pelvis inner spiral of the thigh. Maybe curl your toes under, lift your kneecap up, find that inner spiral and then let rest the foot back down. Where's your heel in relation to your pubic bone? Is, are you on the correct angle for you, what your body can handle today? Can you lengthen the spine as you come to rest down on that support, maybe head on a block? Once you're in the position that you feel like you can maintain, how are you here? Is there tension holding you or support holding you? Feel the props, feel your own internal support of hugging the knees into the pelvis, widen the sit bones, feel the stretch of the spine. Try not to dangle yourself out on an edge. So this is not a safe, happy place to be when you feel like you're right on the edge of something. Back away just slightly from your edge so the body can melt into the stretch instead of being stressed by the stretch. If your body's sensing that one millimeter more is gonna cause collapse, then your body will not relax. So step away. Um, I remember when I was at the Cliffs of Mar in Ireland, I couldn't go right to the edge. I had to lie on my belly and kind of scoop my way forward. And you know, be like that with your poses. If you know you're on an edge and your body's responding with stress, back away. Find something more comfortable so that you can peer over the edge with a little breath and ease. You might notice if you stay here a bit that you can shift, you can get a little longer. You've reset this, the point of these muscles where there's a little more space.
when you feel like you've held this evenly to the other side, if you feel like you've um, mastered the art of staying, right? If you've had some moments of, I want to get out, and then you stay it anyway. And, you know, when you do have those moments of, I want to get out, are they, are they true? Are they, is your body giving you a cue that you must come out for safety or is, or are you bored or are you meeting up against a pattern in the body that's uncomfortable? You know, there's so many layers of why you want to pull out. So pain, definitely pull out. Okay, let's all come out. So just so you know, you held those pigeon poses for over three minutes each. May not have felt that long. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, I don't know, but um, that's a long time to hold a hip stretch. So let's go ahead and find ourselves coming into, um, on your back, knees to your chest and just rock a little bit. Come back to that soothing nature of the ease of your posture. Breathe well. As you find Shavasana, where are you needing support? Do you want something under your knees? Do you want some weight on top of you? Are you cold at all? Do you need to put a blanket over you? If you have an eye pillow, does that give you a sense of soothing? So reach to your props, your supports, whatever it is that you need. Find yourself coming into some rest. What does it feel like to let go? So just as much as we learn to hold length in muscles, we also learn to hold restfulness in Shavasana. Um, it's a deep practice of letting go. And if your mind, if you got a go, go, go mind, Shavasana might be your very hardest posture that you do in your yoga practice. So if you have the beauty and gift of being able to easily rest, have gratitude for that and let your body soften. And if Shavas Shavasana is hard, difficult for you, this is your opportunity to try to stay, to feel into what it feels like to relax the body, to come into soft, deep surrender. To let the limbs melt, feel the spacious pools of your joints again. The ease of the breath. Soft, soft face.
Let's begin to deepen your breathing. Melt your body into the floor. Sometimes just 30 seconds of rest is all we need through the day to reset the still point of the mind, of the body. Let the deep rest as you move into the earth give you a sense of presence, what it feels like to be present for relaxation. This is probably one of the greatest signals you can give muscles to lengthen their still point. All is safe, all is well. The muscles and nervous system respond to these messages. Let's start to move. Breathing. Eventually finding your way onto your side. As you come to sit up, can you allow a sense of surrender in your muscles? Place your hands at your heart. Offer your blessings, your prayers outward. Namaste. Thank you everyone.